Fellas, I want to start with um, with this one, which is around your perception as a footy player. Like, there's a lot of West Coast fans that listen and watch this podcast, and I think a lot of people would not know you as a bloke. And I was fortunate enough to know you. You had a perception of being this antagonist, well, a little shit on the on the footy field, which you know I'm not going to argue with that, to be honest. But how did you find that sort of perception with how you were as a footy player and how you are as a bloke? Because in my experience, it's been different experiences um to be honest i loved it i love that perception you know i was out there to do a job and to win games i wasn't out there to make friends i was out there to kick goals tackle people hurt people if i could and win games so you know if i annoyed anyone you know I'm, i won't be apologizing that was my job i was out there to do a job and the thing was, I could I could back it up with my footy too, you know. I'd, I'd you know I'd cause a bit of cause a bit of shit and stir a few people up, but then I'd come out and kick a few goals, and I think that's what really got people annoyed is that I could actually back it up with my footy as well. I often um, my sporting career, which is often documented and, and talked about a lot on this podcast, um, did get compared to you as a as an athlete in that I would get on the. Um, you know, I played a lot of basketball and uh, a lot of a lot of indoor cricket and stuff, and and often did like to chirp and and cause a bit of uh, a, a bit of a stir. And, and people often said, "Classic uh, Hayden Ballantyne over here." The only difference was that I couldn't really back it up, and so I was just all talk. <laughs> <laughs> but you just got to use what you got. If 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 it's a tool, then uh-huh. you got to use it. A hundred percent. And you know, I'll probably kick t- 10, 20 goals just off free kicks, just because someone snapped and chip me on the jaw like someone from Geelong did and I'll kick a goal and we won that game by five points. So, you know, jokes on them because we win the game. But to be honest, it was what what the outside perception was what if a duck's back. I was I was very determined and very driven to win games and play in finals and try win a premiership. Um so, you know, if I pissed a few people off, I won't be apologizing anytime soon. Um, now, Dan, I'm hoping my mic's still working well, mate, because I made that change up. You boys hear me fine still? Hear you well, loud and clear, mate. Yep. Um, Bell is like, so you did have this reputation of stirring people up, and it's good to hear that you love that as well. I feel like if I reflect on you and me through our careers, I, I never copped the, I never copped the full wrath, and and I was reflecting about it today when I was thinking about chatting to you. I never copped the full Hayden Ballantyne. I really can't remember a time where you really went at me that hard. Why was that? Uh, I don't want to say it, but I might have liked you a little bit, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you could have just said I was shit, not good enough to go at. <laughs> I, did, I could say that too. I, I would always target the best defenders. Like, With all due respect, Scott, I don't mean to pull the piece, but you know, yeah, Matty Scarlett yeah, was always... Okay. Matty Scarlett was always the first one I'd go to because he was the best defender in the comp at that time. You know, Geelong were the best team and I'd always love playing against Geelong because they were, they were the target. They were the ones we wanted to beat. If we, we wanted to be the best team, we had to beat the best teams and Geelong were at that time. So uh, Matty Scarlett, um, Corey Enright, those were the, they were the best defenders in the comp. And as soon as I seen them on the field, my eyes lit up and I thought, you, you boys are going to have a long night tonight because I'm going to give it to you all night and I'm going to kick some goals on you. And that was my that was my mentality. I wasn't out there to make a friend. I was out there to win a game and, and do my job. And um, I think that's why Ross Lyon picked me every week because I would do my job and everyone knew it. Who were you well, blokes at West Coast? The... Oh, oh, sorry. sorry, you, you go, mate. You, yeah, well, who, um, who, were you, who were you blokes at West Coast? Well, to be honest, um, had nothing to do with with um, Andy Brayshaw, but before that was Gaff, he was always a target because he had that perception of being a bit soft and you could intimidate him, but you actually couldn't. Like he would just, he just kept on getting up. You'd bash the shit out of him and you just kept getting up. <laughs> so he was, he was always one. Um, Shannon Hearn, you know, you try and get stuck into him, try, try, I don't know, try to take him out in some way, but he's, he's, he never said anything. He was too nice. He was always just the nice person that would never give you a tap on the back when you try and clean him up. Like he's just, <laughs> It always be too nice, which pissed me off a bit. Um, yeah, basically, basically someone who I thought I could get an edge over, someone that I thought would snap and I could just take them out of the game, just 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 through their mentality and the way they were going to approach it. Did you and Ryan Crowley ever get together and talk about this? Because I feel like from the outside as well, he was always a bit of a pest and liked to get in niggle. Like, would you guys like? 
have a bit of a plan of attack on someone? We never planned it, but it always happened. Like Krauser was always on the best player, so he was the target. Not just for me. Like I would always you know, make a point of really getting stuck into him. But um, at Scully, you'd know the, the whoever was getting tagged. It wasn't just the tagger doing the job. The whole team did it. If the ta- if they got away from the tagger, someone had to chase and make sure that player didn't get a kick or didn't kick a goal because. If they get up and about, they get the team up, um, that can cost us the game. So, you know, the, the poor bastards that cra- went to Crows, they had 22 players just into them all game. The, well, the, you know, the, the funny thing is internally, these players externally, so we talk about Crowley and Ballantyne from Fremantle, that people, you know, love to hate a little bit, but it, they'd probably be the two players from Fremantle that I would have loved to have played with on my team. And... Maybe Bellas, I don't know how you find it, but I sort of started getting towards that, towards the end of my career, being that instigator a bit, and because I was getting slow and old, or slower and older than I ever was, it just became a tool of my trade, you know, trying to get under people's skin. And you, you know, at times it's you know people don't like you, and in inverted commas, but in, in the end, I think people respect the fact that you're able to go at someone. But not very often are these sort of blokes that we talk about. Um, that it doesn't really carry off the field. I know Ryan mm. Crowley personally as well. Like, like, unfortunately, a really good bloke. And, yeah. and same with you, Bell. Like, unfortunately, you're actually a good bloke, which is you know, it's probably disappointing to hear for a lot of West Coast fans. Well, I remember – oh, sorry. I was going to say, I remember in 20, so 2016 when there was that sort of talk of, of – and we'll talk, maybe talk about this in a little bit later with you coming over to West Coast, potential for that – like the moment that that comes into conversation, West Coast fans will be like, yeah, sweet, we'll take him straight away. But like leading up to that, you, you, you'd you sort of love to hate him. And the same with Crowley. I remember when he eventually, when he got, um, when he left Frio and there was some potential for him to, to move, I would have taken him on West Coast any, t- any day. But leading up to that, didn't want anything to do with him. Yeah, and I, th- I think that's because the players we were, you knew what you were going to get week in, week out. Like we gave everything we had. You know, we might not have been the most skillful, we might not have been the best players out in the field, but you knew, you know, you knew Krause's man wasn't going to get a kick. Krause would have got a kick, but his man wasn't getting a kick. You knew I was going to lay tackles and kick a couple of goals and and get stuck into the opposition. So um, I think that's, and and I've, I've I've felt that perception too. You know, I, I know a lot of people say they didn't like me and how much of a pest I was, but um, then a lot of them also said that um, I wouldn't mind you on my team as well. <laughs> 